This is all <laughs> gathered in folks so you can see our patients. Listen, uh, Stan, I'm sorry to wake you up, mate. We're going to play that game again. You know, we get you sick and we make you better. Is that oh, okay? You know what? I'm, I'm sick of that game. I man. know you are. So we're going to get a brew, okay? Oh, okay. Two sugars, please. Two sugars. All right. You have a little sleep. Okay, right. mate. Good night. Good night. <laughs> okay, folks. Uh, so we've done that for a reason there. We've shown you straight away that you can fully interact with your patient today. Okay. Uh, Jeff has more than likely gone into a little bit of background with regards to how we're going to play things and how things are going to plan out. We will split you up into groups. Uh, two halves, you will come into the room, you will then be split up into further smaller groups uh, while the rest of you are able to watch live front of house as you, as you manage the, the patient case. Okay? We will give you a little bit of a background on the patient before you come in, so you'll have a little bit of a heads up and you'll be able to, to have a think about what you're going to do with the patient. Okay? And the idea today is that you work through the patient case. Uh, you can make changes to the patient case, you can ask for investigations. So you need to be doing that when you come and you need to get involved. Uh, the other thing is we want you to interact with the patient. This is a great opportunity today to practice and rehearse your communication skills with the patient. Okay. So you will all have a chance to do that. You will all be asked to do that individually. Okay. Um, what we'll do then, we'll, the best way to do this is probably to, to go through the, the patient's uh, capabilities, what, what our patient can do for you today. Uh, has anyone uh, undertaken the, the, the sort of uh, the clinical assessment part of your course? Have you clinical learnt skills. how to clinically oh, yeah. assess? Yeah, yeah. Brilliant, okay. Uh, today's a great opportunity to put that into practice. When you assess the patient, you will get di direct feedback from our patients. Okay. So, for example, uh, if you wanted to uh, listen to the chest, if you thought your patient was an asthmatic and you wanted to see if your patient had a, an expiratory wheeze, you could do that and you would hear a, a coarse expiratory wheeze on the patient's chest. We've got a full range of chest sounds at the mannequin. So, therefore, you can look at the background of the patient, you can ask the patient's history, how they've been feeling relatively uh, uh, sort of relative to, to their situation and then you can make your assessment and fit in the results and findings dependent upon the patient's condition. Does that make sense? Yeah? So what I'll do, we, we, if, we, if we all gather in so you can actually see what you can do and you can then get hands on, uh, obviously one or two have got a few sort of uh, crumpled faces at the moment because it, it, this is quite disconcerting. He is at the end of the day a big rubber action man in the bed. But we think he's the best on the market running around 70 to 80 thousand pounds. So there is an awful lot of things he can do. With regards to the teams that we normally have through the centre, uh, we would expect these are obviously going to be medical teams, and we would expect them to assess the patient in an ABCD format. Does that make sense to you guys? A being airway, breathing, circulation, disability and exposure would be a head to toe exposure of the patient. Uh, so probably the best way is for me to, to show you what the mannequin can do in that order. All right, so we gather in, have a, have a proper look. We'll start with the airway. We have full control over the airway, so we can swell up the tongue from moderate to severe. So we'll do that now. Can you put the, the tongue on, Tony? There we go. So that's semi swollen. If you have a look in, you can see that that airway is pretty, pretty occluded. Okay, um, we can jam the mouth shut which will be called turismus, so we can make it really difficult for medical teams to get airway adjuncts in. We've got a nice box of makeup, so we can put broken teeth, sputum, blood, vomit, all that in the airway and make, make them have to, have to sort of manage the airway via, via suction and, and other airway adjuncts. Moving down, if we wanted to give the patient a tracheostomy, we can, so we can fit in with the trachea. Uh, who would like to have a little listen to the chest? Who's done that, that, that assessment? Have a go, all have a little listen. Hands them out. Yeah. All time in you can't be shy today, you've all got to get hands on. You will get out of today what you put in. The more you put in, yeah. the more you'll get out. So off you go. You can listen all over the chest. Um, not in the back unfortunately, but anywhere on the on the front chest wall and you'll you'll pick up uh, you'll pick up chest sounds reasonably well. Okay, so at the moment you've got a, a normal chest, so you'll hear an expiratory and an expiratory phase on the on the breathing. Okay. Okay, get your hands on we'll if you've pass them around the stethoscope so you can't have a listen. You have to get a bit closer to listen to the chest. Yeah, you have to, you have to put the stethoscope on the <laughs> chest for this to work. Go that <laughs> That's it, one. You can all have a go at the same time. Okay. He is almost a real patient, but he won't mind. Can you hear chest sounds there? Yeah. Could we put a wheeze on Tony, please? Okay. 
Okay, folks, can you hear that wheeze? Yeah. Again, we've got full control over chest sounds. We can give him creps, wheeze, rails, and crackles. So it will fit in directly to the uh, the patient that you you will be looking at today. Further things with regards to chest examination, you may wish in this scenario to ask for a chest x-ray, we can do that for you. Um, observations like blood gases, standard bloods you can ask for and we'll, we'll give you the results of them in the room, okay. Okay, everyone had a, a decent lesson, yeah? Anyone not had a lesson? Yeah, okay. lesson. Anybody else? Okay, moving on to circulation then, as, uh, as the rest of you have a listen. Uh, the patient has a full range of pulses, so he's got bilateral carotid, radial, femoral and popliteal pulses. And these will fail as we would normally expect. So if the patient was uh, had a low blood pressure or was bleeding out for any reason, as in a normal human being, they will fail from peripheral into, into central pulses. Okay. Um, Observation-wise, with regards to all of this, he's at the moment, as you can see, breathing. We've got bilateral chest excursion. He's breathing in the air from within the room. He's calibrating that air within. Uh, his chest with a gas analyzer and when we hook him up to a, a, a SATS probe we will kick out a saturations cur curve and a, and a SATS percentage on the screen so you can you can get a full range of monitoring when you, you you're in the in the scenario as well if you want SATS respiratory obviously you can count his respirator it may well appear on the screen we can give you an ECG uh, we've got control over the ECG so we can give him different heart rhythms uh, we can get an up-to-date blood pressure on, on the patient so you can check through the observations and, and see how the, the plan that you're implementing works for the patient. Now normally these uh, scenarios will be quite rapid with other teams, in, in your case it, we've got great control over it so what we can do, you can implement a plan, implement a medication maybe and assess the result of that. We can jump ahead in time a day or two, see whether that's worked, if it hasn't worked we can stop and rewind and change the, the plan, okay. So great opportunity today to, to put things into place and see how it works for the patient, okay. Um, if we go through the assessment then, we got to circulation, didn't we? We talked about blood pressure, you can check for a BP. Um, disability, we've got control over the pupil responses with the, the patient. So say for example, we were unfortunate to overdose the patient on an opioid. His pupils will become pinpoint, he will respiratory depress and then later on he'll nod off to sleep. Okay, so we need to be obviously secure and safe in the administrations that we're giving. Um, he will shake and fit. You're probably reassured to know that he's not going to sit up and get out of the bed. But, but he will fully respond to, to you as you as you sort of interact with him. Okay. And as we've said, there's, there's our patient either fitting or, or shivering. He might be a little bit cold there as well. Uh, I've already mentioned about the, um, the box of makeup, so exposure wise we can give him uh, different wounds, we can pop drains in, the patient can be catheterised and he will excrete urine as well. The urine output, if he's uh, hypovolemic or, or with a low blood pressure, uh, the urine output may well tail off. So again, you can, you can fully interact with him. Okay. We won't be pretending today, we will actually be administering all the medications that you, you suggest. Okay, but as we've said, the key to this is that you buy into it. The more you put in, the more you'll get out. We know that it's a little bit embarrassing. Um, the guys next door are, are, are not sort of watching Holby City. You're going to be, you're going to be getting involved as well. We expect you to be coming up with a plan, and we will be checking backwards and forwards through the through the uh, the scenario to see where you're up to. Okay. Any questions? <laughs> it's all quiet. Very quiet. There's only yeah. one, one way that you can, or one drug that you can give to a patient. So people may come up with different ideas, that's fine. But if you're working in teams, so as a team, you need to decide on one drug. You need to be very clear on your communication, as we heard before. So, what information do you, if you're saying, for example, you want to start Ramipril, what information may you need to give with that? The dose. The dose, always useful, yes. So, yeah, so is it once a day, once twice a day? What else? Strength. The strength, yeah, so what strength are we starting on? What else? Form. Form, so what, what types of form are there? Capsules, tablets. Capsules, tablets, what else? IV. IV, yeah, so you may, you need to be very clear, IV, subcut, intermuscular, yeah, you need to be clear when you want a drug administered. Which drug, what strength, 
the, the root, the dose, how long for? Is it a one-off dose? Is it a five-day course? Is it forever? And, and who are you communicating with? The patient, brilliant, and your colleagues. And the staff, yeah, 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 the staff you're going to be working with. So there's there's uh, an interesting dynamic there with regards to communication because you communicate differently to the patient than you would to the medical staff, wouldn't you? You need to be maybe a little bit more uh, understanding, have a little bit more empathy when it comes to describing things to the patient. So that's what you can explore today. Okay? Any questions? No? Sure, you're yeah. free to get hands on if you want to feel for pulses. Can I feel the pulses? Yep. The pulses are on demand, folks, so you'll find there's a little spongy pad. When you press the pad down and draw back, you'll start to feel the pulse at that point. And that's, at the moment, feels quite a regular sinus rhythm. Yeah, as you can see at the moment, he's a gentleman, but we have spare parts. You can make him feel whatever you want to. <laughs> Rotted a little bit to uh, find it. They're tucked away in there, yeah. Uh, just as difficult as a real tracing, to be fair. Yeah, there you go. There. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. It's like the only place I can find the bones for myself. <laughs> okay, happy? Once you're happy then pop next door, get yourselves a quick drink and we'll we'll crack on.